Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I want to give you my guide for Royal Guard, both for the earlier game and also the later game. Because this is a champion that is just just dominates the whole scene here in Rage Shadow Legends from start to finish in the game. I actually I kind of forgot about him. I haven't done a guide in him for so long. The funny thing is, he is my most used epic. He's my most used in the entire game. I guess it's kind of like, you, you know, your wife or whatever, you take it for granted, don't you? You take it for granted. Uh, so Royal Guard, he has been taken for granted. So sorry, Royal Guard. Uh, let's, let's do a guide for you here today. And then you'll be happy, I guess. Uh, let's look at his skills. What makes him so good? Razor Blade is A1. Single target attack, 50%. Books to a 65% chance of placing decreased defense for two turns. Actually really nice. A good supplement. It's not super reliable. Yeah, but it's actually a very good supplement to bring into a lot of the sort of content we're going to be running him in. Now, take down his A2. This is his big money ability. This is the money shot. Attacks all enemies. Damage increases according to enemy max HP. So we simply, we get him to 100% crit rate. We want him to crit. Then we crank his critical damage as high as we can. And he's just going to hit insanely hard against, in particular, bosses. And this is what makes him so powerful for Hydra in particular. It's an AoE attack hitting all the Hydra heads. And because they have such high max HP on Brutal, on Nightmare, he's just scaling up, scaling up, scaling up to match them and pumping out more damage than really any other, well, most other damage dealers can do at that really high level of Hydra, for example. He does the same thing in dungeons up to level 20. Kind of weird dungeon. Well, I'll show you here today, of course. But for dungeons 21 to 25 and Doom Tower bosses, they have protection against this. They can only lose 10% of their max HP in a single hit. So he's sort of this weird champion where he's insane. Um, kind of starts being good, like level 15 to level 20 dungeons. He's absolute god tier. Then 21 to 25, he completely falls off. He's still good in Fire Knight, but that's about it. And then when you go into late game Hydra stuff, like you get past normal and probably start getting past hard Hydra, you're looking to brutal and nightmare. Suddenly Royal Guard pops in. He's like, hi, I'm back. It's great fun. Hamstring his A3, four turn cooldown here when booked, attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 60 books to 75% chance of placing decreased speed for two turns. And each hit also has a 60 books to 75% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 25%. Again, this move is also actually surprisingly good. So it is random. So that randomness is a bit of a bummer. For example, in the spider dungeon, it's really not gonna do anything useful or not much useful. Uh, you can target the first person. So if you manually target this, or he obviously targets the spider boss, the first hit will always go to them, but the other three hits are random. So you can target it, which is nice. Uh, but again, it's that supplement of decreased speed. Not super reliable, but that supplemental decreased speed, that supplemental turn meter reduction can actually add up to a lot on these boss fights, right? So we compare him, for example, to Husk in the Hydra. He's squishier than Husk, but he does bring you decreased defense. He's going to bring you that decreased speed. And that sort of stuff does kind of balance out. It's interesting. And he has a really good aura that get, gets sort of forgotten about, but 35% ally attack in dungeons. Really good. I use this in Minotaur all the time. Um, so yeah, let, let's actually, let's show you a quick run. Let me show you this, this to you first, showing that aura in action. I actually use Royal Guard here all the time. Let's actually take these guys out. Uh, this is my this is my team. This is my team for Minotaur that I've been running for forever. Royal Guard in the lead, 35% attack aura. And then an Ethos in with him. Uh, Ethos is a nuker with two AOE attacks, so he can do that. He can one-shot both waves. Um, you see Royal Guard comes in here, actually lands decreased speed on both of these. There we go. He's going to take some extra turns, which is nice. And one really interesting thing, you can sort of see it happening right there. He has a really interesting custom AI where he's not using his max HP nuke here until he places decreased defense on the boss. It's actually really intriguing. That was a really good showcase of it. I actually, I, I should have like planned this and recorded it in advance to show you, but it actually worked out great. His AI customized, he does prioritize like against that Minotaur using his A1, trying to get decreased defense, which is good because it ups ethos damage as well. And then he'll go into the takedown which is pretty cool. Um, with, with the Minotaur run especially, you're really only gonna get one takedown out of it. 
worked quite well. Works quite well. So this is the team I use. 25 seconds here. The fastest was 17. It's usually about 20 to 30 seconds or so. Uh, you could use Cleopteryx. She's a login legendary that has the same sort of skill set, a very similar skill set to Ethos and damage to Ethos. You could absolutely use her or any other Herndig, whatever, Trunda. There's a lot of, of legendaries that have... Um, two AoE attacks so they can one-shot each wave. Uh, War Mother, really nice one. I I'm a big fan of War Mother. I want to get her so I can do a video on her. Anyway, let's not talk about War Mother. Let's talk about Royal Guard. So I have two Royal Guards here. And um, they're not quite... They're not quite... I'll show you the masteries that would change. But they're sort of indicative of the two types of builds that you would go for. So let me show you the late game Royal Guard first. Uh, now, this guy's not quite perfect. In terms of sets, he's in two perception and resilience set, and that's okay. The ideal sets would be uh, relentless, which the other one is in, relentless, chance for an extra turn, or reflex. Uh, I've got, for example, this one. My cold heart is in a reflex. Chance to reduce one of your skill cooldowns by one turn. Uh, I prefer relentless to reflex. The reason is with Royal Guard, you do tend to rely on his A3 actually quite a bit as well. So... Reflex is not going to be quite as good. Relentless will give you cooldowns on both his A3 and his A2, which is awesome. Whereas Reflex is going to be random between the two. can kind of throw stuff off a little bit in a way that's not always good. But they're both really good sets. They'd be your ideal sets. I have them with these just for the stats, really. And this is what I'm shooting for. For an endgame Royal Guard, what are you looking for? So attack, believe it or not, doesn't actually matter. We don't care. Uh, we want high speed, like 230 plus is what we're looking for. Obviously, 100% crit rate. We're actually going to drop his crit damage for endgame pretty low. We're going to run at 222% here. Really looking for over 200%, and I'm happy with that, which is kind of crazy. Very different from the early game Royal Guard build I'll show you in a second. And we want him to have, trying to go for, you know, pushing towards 2,000 defense and pushing above 40,000 HP. This is to make him tanky enough. This is really for Hydra. Right, so he's fast enough against the Hydra that he gets lots of turns. He's still doing good enough damage against Hydra, and he can survive some hits. Then we also were aiming for 350 accuracy. I'm a little bit low, but it is what it is. It's it's the best I could do with my gear. And again, preferably in Relentless set, if you can. Uh, I needed the extra stats here, as you can see. And in order to build this, I'll show you the actual individual pieces of gear. We're going to be looking for, obviously, lots of crit rate. For example, here I can glyph up the speed when I get ever get some speed glyphs again. I can glyph up the accuracy a bit more. But speed, accuracy, crit rate. And then we're going to be going for, like, crit damage gloves, preferably with crit rate and speed and accuracy. These are only blue, but they've got the stats, but they could be better. HP percentage chest. Actually pretty important. This is going to help him stay alive. Speed boots to hit your speed. Then we're going to give him... I actually have him in a defense ring. Now, defense percent is no good, really, because his base defense is so terrible. But that flat defense on the ring is great. So it's actually quite a... It's a really bad ring for most characters, but it's good for Royal Guard. Flat defense, great with this awful base defense. Then we have some HP percent, some attack percent. And, you know, the chance to counterattack is kind of nifty. Crit damage on the necklace you would prefer to have one with more accuracy to he help you hit the accuracy threshold then i actually believe it or not have him in a resistance banner which is super random it just has really good speed on it and it's got some nice defense and stuff like that really a flat defense banner would probably be your best bet um yeah i'd be ideally going for flat defense you could obviously run an accuracy banner if you need to i'd say flat defense is your best bet again for that hydra survivability because all the damage is coming from takedown it says it scales on attack, but it really doesn't. So this is like your sort of end game build. And for end game style masteries, you're going to go for something like this. We're actually going to go for War Master, which especially against Hydra, is going to give us more damage because it's going to proc that in the AoE hits. And when he hits multiple Hydra heads with his decreased speed move, it's going to proc multiple War Master hits. Other than that, just the whole left hand side of this tree pretty straightforward then we're going to go down the support tree we're going to get him just more accuracy we will get him cycle of magic chance to cool down his skill look if you get a cooldown on your takedown you're really happy so that's good uh lore of steel is good if you're running base stat sets like i am and then we're going to get him sniper more chance for that decreased speed decreased defense and then more chance to extend those and, and this is your end game royal guard now in contrast or actually let me let me show you roughly what you're going to get out of him. I won't show you a run of Hydra, 
But uh, where was my key this week? Down, 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 down. Ninth place. Oh, my God. I need to step up my game. But as you can see, this was uh, Nightmare Hydra this week. We did 38 million damage. And you can see in terms of the damage output, where is it coming from? It's A lot of it's coming from Geomancer. And then a lot of it is coming from Royal Guard. And it's this exact same Royal Guard. And what he's doing for us in, in this key is obviously pumping out insane damage, even without being built crazy for damage. You can see I've got him a lot built for survivability. He's still putting out crazy damage, supplemental decreased defense, and more importantly, supplemental decreased speeds is really good, especially in combination with Krisk, who only has that 50% chance to land it. So that's the sort of thing you can expect out of this sort of Royal Guard. I will show you more Royal Guard gameplay, don't you worry. For the early game build, early game, you're going to be building something more like this. So if we jump over to the stats, you can see this difference. I actually have him faster than you would have early game. This is also somewhat built for Hydra. But your early game Royal Guard, you're going to be shooting for about 170 speed. So we're going to be way off the 230 for late game. We don't mind because this guy is really much more built for your level 20 dungeons, right? 170 speed is what you're going to shoot for. And you're going to be happy for that. He'll help you out in Hydra as well. Um... 100% crit rate, obviously mandatory. And this is where we really diverge. We're only going to be going for about 200-ish accuracy, but it's optional. You don't need it. The main thing, we want to give him as much crit damage as is humanly possible. We just want to crank it, crank it, crank it, so that he nukes those dungeon bosses as hard as he can. Um, this one is built with a ton of survivability. He's very tanky. He doesn't need to be that tanky. This is more for brutal Hydra. A Nightmare Hydra. This is not super relevant for dungeons. You could leave him at like 30k and, and 1.5k in, in health and defense respectively. And he would work fine. Okay, he would work all right. But there's really no reason not to put him, I feel, in the HP percentage chest. It's just the right choice. And you're going for pretty much the same sort of stuff. Crit damage gloves, HP percentage chest. And then you're going to be going for speed boots. This is where you can put him in a good set if you've got one. It's just a lot more forgiving to build him like this. It's a lot more forgiving because the speed requirements are so much lower and the accuracy requirements are so much lower. Crank his crit damage up. Then for the masteries, I have him in the same ones, again, for Hydra. Let me show you what you would build him in. So you would build him like this, okay? So instead of going into War Master, you would instead go for Flawless Execution, which is gonna give you 20% more critical damage to up your damage against those level 20 dungeon bosses and then apart from that you're going to get more damage when you're full hp because you should be more damage on the first hit more damage targets with high hp and you grab him some support tree stuff just to pad out that accuracy help you to reach that stuff but the support tree is not super essential um, you could you could give him cyclo magic if you want it as well it's not a huge deal but yeah something like that is what you're going to be going for um and this Royal Guard's going to be very, very different. So this is the sort of Royal Guard that's going to excel in places like Ice Golem and Dragon's Lair. Uh, let me see. Let me throw together a team real fast and I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually think this looks like a pretty nice starter team. I think for safety, we probably should put Deliana in the lead. Uh, Deliana should basically be able to solo this dungeon level for me, but we'll go into it. Very, very starter-friendly team here. We've got, um, obviously, Deliana, who's the current free legendary champion that you get. We have Royal Garden here. We've got Apothecary to give us our speed boosts. Deliana is going to be healing us. And then we've got damage from these guys. Now, what we do have to be fairly scared of is them actually killing us. The stuns that we have, for example, right there on the Apothecary are from War Maiden. So in this particular run, okay, you can see this is a little bit, a little bit, uh, maybe unfair. We did a little bit too much damage and we probably should have lost some champions there. We might lose some champions here on this wave. This looks more like it. We'll see how it goes. But the Royal Guard, you can see his hit coming in right there. Actually not too shabby. There we go. We lost Apothecary. Good. Cool. Deliana finishes them off. No problem. Um, but right there, you can see the takedown from Royal Guard. Not bad against... Not, not bad against the boss. Really not bad at all. We could certainly use Royal Guard's aura, but I really think that the extra HP is going to be a little bit better. And here against the boss, that decreased defense from his A1 is going to be helpful. The decreased speed's not really going to do anything. Unfortunately, we were a bit unlucky there. And we didn't come back around to uh, our takedown on time. But that's okay. You're going to see. Here we go. Wha-bam. 400,000 damage from Royal Guard with that takedown. It's a really big hit against this dragon. And that's going to help us 
It's going to help us stay alive. It's going to help us kill that dragon a heck of a lot faster. Ah, it looks like this is going to be a little bit sketchy. The takedown comes in again, though, and absolutely slams that dragon. And if we had built him, Royal Guard, in that earlier game build, where we'd crank his crit damage much higher, that would be hitting just even harder. And we'll absolutely destroy that dragon. We can see the passive from Deliana kicking in. And there we go. It was 1 minute 30. And we can see the top damage. Guess who? It's Royal Guard. It's really, really good. Uh, obviously, putting in a reviver here would probably make this a bit safer. Uh, like, my starter champion, he's not really contributing that much damage. Between, like, Royal Guard and Deliana is more than enough AoE damage, really. Decreased defense from War Maiden. Putting in someone with decreased attack as well. Like a Stag Knight or Duck the Pierced would be much better here. And then Apothecary speed boosting us. It's actually Stalwart defense. But you know what? I'll actually keep that pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, you can see that sort of does... It did the job. It did the job uh, in the Dragons there. One what I do want to talk about is Ice Golem. I'm not going to put in a free-to-play friendly team here. This is a late game team right here. Uh, I want to show you this just because it's funny. Ice Golem's Lair. This is actually... A, or is it Lair? I can't remember. Ice Golem's... Hangout place, I don't know. That Ice Golem's party, party plaza. Uh, this is a pretty tricky one. The issue being that Royal Guard hits so hard. Here you can see the Royal Guards are able to just wipe out these waves with Lydia placing decreased defense and weaken. You can see on the far right, we miss the decreased defense and the two Royal Guards is not quite enough damage to kill this, but we get through. Um, they hit the boss so hard, they will actually push him through multiple of his retaliation hits. So this is a dungeon where actually using your Royal Guard is very dangerous. This is a late game speed farming team. Right now, as I'm recording this, we're in the middle of a fusion event for Helicath. And we are uh, right now farming Ice Golem. We've got super rates for Ice Golem. You're able to burn through this dungeon so quickly with Royal Guard. Here comes a takedown. Wha-bam! Rips through the boss. And you can see, again, we're going to start ripping through our own health bars. Here comes the Frigid Vengeance. Bam, hits us again. All right. We get the shields back on. Royal Guard in the middle is going to do a takedown next time he gets a turn. And that could trigger another retaliation hit. It definitely will. It's, nope, oh, never mind. We're going to trigger it early. Okay. We might even trigger another one here. Yeah, here he goes again. Wha-bam. <laughs> and that's where it gets scary, right? When Royal Guard triggers a retaliation hit and the two side adds are still alive, the damage scales up or well. The boss ignores your defense and ignore, I think it's 50% of your defense is ignored when one ad is alive and he ignores, I think, 100% when both ads are alive. So he hits you really hard. I mean, these are end game, you know, well, fairly end game geared characters and they got absolutely slammed right there. They got smacked. That's the danger of Royal Guard. Even with just one Royal Guard, it can absolutely go wrong. But as you can see, for endgame speed farm, and he's in my endgame speed farming teams for every single one of these dungeons. You can even use him in the potion keeps. I don't right now, but Minotaur, he's in there. Uh, double Royal Guards for Ice Golem. For Dragon's Lair, what do I actually use for stage 20? Um, and the reason you do stage 20 is because it's just the fastest way to grind out uh, tournaments and dungeon divers for fusions, right? It's the fastest and most efficient uh, for your energy spent. Uh, Dragon 20, he's in there with the cold heart. You could use double Royal Guard here as well. Uh, then we have Seer for, we don't even need Seer. We could even use pretty much this exact sort of same team would work just fine. Uh, so that maybe could have some tweaks, but that will clear it in about a minute. And then one of my favorite ones that's going to be a huge deal for you is going to be Spider. It is going to be Spider Dungeon. And here I'm actually running double Royal Guards, double Cold Hearts and a Lydia. Super endgame speed farm. Let's just see what Royal Guard is capable of. Funny enough, Cold Heart is much better for Spider than Royal Guard is because Royal Guard will kill the Spiderlings, which you actually don't want to do just simply because it's going to slow your time down. Uh, you can see that the two Royal Guards, they are going to actually kill these Spiderlings, which you don't want to happen. And if we had cranked their damage higher, they would have... Um, they could potentially kill that boss in three hits with the decreased defense and weaken. But Royal Guard can be part of your team here. He's not as good as Cold Heart because they both do the same damage to the boss, which is what matters. Damage to the Spiderling's not really helpful. But Cold Heart depletes the boss's turn meter, which buys you time. So she is better. But Royal Guard can absolutely work in it. You can check out my budget. Um, I did like a budget unkillable team for Spider Stand Stage 20, which will work, by the way, will work with Helicath if you get the Helicath fusion uh, with that team. 
I can show you how it would work right now. So I think uh, with that team, I uh, I was running, I think like one Royal Guard, one Cold Heart, I think. Then you would have Helicath. I used, instead of Helicath, I used, where is he? A Man Eater, right? So a Man Eater. Then we would have a, um, this is the sneaky part of it. You're gonna need a really low level champion, a level 30, or not even level 30, even lower than level 30. Da, 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 da. This is quality content right here. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe while you're here. <laughs> here we go. You throw in like a level seven, a level seven renegade to reset your abilities. And then you need something that brings decreased defense. I used Tayrell the first time I was here. Uh, but there are other champions you could use. Really anyone with reliable decreased defense. Tayrell is good because Tayrell provides us with a uh, more turn meter depletion. So let me see, where's Tayrell? Where's Tayrell? I'm blind. There he is, there he is. Okay, so we go in like this and check it out. Here we go, we'll play it on manual. And again, you could do this with Helicath instead of Maneater, would work just fine. Maneater is a little better, but it's not a huge deal. So we play it not on auto, we put like unkillable on everyone. Royal Guard is gonna place decreased speed on the spider. We're gonna decrease defense right here. If your decreased defense champion is faster, which they should be, then you could go straight into takedown. I'm not able to do that, unfortunately. We're gonna Heart Seeker, the spider, which nukes him. Again, Cold Heart and Royal Guard both do the same damage. So doesn't really matter. We're gonna siphon this guy. Again, decrease his turn meter. Royal Guard will now come in and slam. Boom, there we go. We're halfway through already. Decreases turn meter some more with Tayrell because we can. And look at this, our unkillable champion is tanking it. Ooh, maybe actually, you know, now I think about it, it wouldn't work with Helicath because Helicath would block the damage. It wouldn't work with Helicath, but maybe there's another team similarly that you could use where the unkillable sort of takes you through. So again, we'll sort of decrease our speed here. That's gonna be fine. Uh, we can actually just A1 the boss at this point. And that's, that's basically, it's in the bag, right? We can put our unkillable back on. Heart Seeker again. And uh, then Royal Guard finishes it off. So this is a really nice sort of budget unkillable style team. Really nice budget unkillable style team that you can run and uh, have great success with. Again, Cold Heart is better than Royal Guard, but Royal Guard gets the job done. He does get the job done. If you don't have two of these enemy max HP nukers, you're simply gonna have to do it slower. Um, but you can do it, so you're going to have to build more of a team to last. But Royal Guard can come in there and still be great, bringing decreased speed, a little bit of decreased turn meter, and the enemy max HP nukes. You'd have to build a very different team with something like uh, a tank, so a negative affinity tank. Kind of too complicated for the purpose of this video. It's kind of too long already. But yeah, but maybe I'll do another video on that sometime. You'd bring in like something like a Nazana, for example. Nazana, an epic, is quite good. She's the wrong affinity for the spider, so she gets targeted. Build her with good resistance, and she tanks through, healing up with, like, lifesteal gear and AoE A1s with Warmaster, that sort of thing. Uh, but, yeah, so he's pretty good. Royal Guard is pretty good. He's pretty good. The last thing I wanted to show you, let's go to this, and it's, it's going at faster speed. Another really great place where he's used late game because of the utility that he brings. Enemy max HP, AoE nukes which is really useful for clearing through the waves and doing boss damage. Um, <clears throat> and then also decreased speed and decreased turn meter. He is fantastic against Dark Fae. I think for new players, Dark Fae is one of the hardest bosses because she turns your own team against you. This is very much a specialist team. And I'll be honest, I just copied YST. <laughs> YST, as you guys know, I've done some collabs at YST. We're actually due to do another collab soon. I must get talking to him. We'll try to get another collab out for you guys. But absolutely fantastic Rage YouTuber as well. He put together a guide on this pretty much exact team. So this is sort of how it works. We come in, we nuke them down. And Royal Guard right here, great thing, right? We got the four hits at random with his decreased speed. But guess what? Guess what? If there's only one enemy, if there's only the one boss, then we get four chances to place decreased speed and four chances to, de to deplete the turn meter against the boss, which is great. So he's super good for this boss right here. The decreased defense he needs, uh, he can do, isn't really useful because Deacon Armstrong in the lead is providing that. What Royal Guard is doing though, he is giving us decreased speed, which no one else is bringing in this team. 
um, he's bringing us that additional turn meter and you can see how close she's getting to taking a turn I think she does get like one turn near the end here And then he's also doing really good damage against this boss on top of helping us You know kill the waves and stuff on the way here and just speed farm this faster It's one of the best bosses to farm and there we go simple as that we get through This is the final boss doom tower floor 120 hard uh, Dark Fae and it's a really really cool team again check out YST's video if you want an in-depth guide on how this works You can see Royal Guard coming in with a really good damage output here and the decreased speed he's bringing is pretty much essential Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to stop the Dark Fae taking those turns. So he's just he's just perfect for this He's super super good. So there you go guys very versatile champion very reliable champion Um yeah, he's, he's great. He does feature as well in some Fire Knight teams. Now, he's bad for stage 20 Fire Knight, but he's actually good for stage 25. So even though the Fire Knight has that, can't be hit that hard by max HP hits, he still does get used. Like, here's a team right here where he's still getting used. He's going to potentially help you a bit, clearing out some of the waves. But the big thing is, against that Fire Knight, that four hitter on his A3, helping to knock down the Fire Knight shield, the decreased speed, the decreased turn meter, very, very useful, again, to supplement here. And then, yeah, he's only doing 10% max HP in a single hit, but it's still it's still 10% max HP in a single hit. It's okay, you know, it's not it's not too shabby. So, yeah, okay, let me know if you have any questions here. I know we were sort of bouncing back and forth, maybe a bit too much, perhaps, between uh, an early game and late game, but you sort of get the idea. You get the gist, I think. This is a champion that is just insane, for level 20 bosses, he's insane for Hydra as well. Great for some of those Doom Tower bosses. And just fantastic for speed farming level 20 dungeons, for speed farming Minotaur, which is where you're going to spend a lot of time. If you're a free-to-play player, let me tell you, you're going to spend a lot of time farming Minotaur. And then every fusion event every month, you're going to be spending a lot of time farming level 20 dungeons. You're going to see a lot of this guy. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of them. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.